Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. We are back for more interrogation. You will be deceived. So after that late night let's play, I was all in on this game. So let's just go ahead and continue. Now last time, during the late night let's play, uh, we found out that this guy murdered his wife. We also found out that he has some ties to this liberation front, which he found online and it sounds like, a, like an extremist group that he may or may not be a part of or that he wanted to join, okay? So let's just go ahead. Interrogation successful. With the confession secured, Daryl Peterson will be going to jail for a long time. What is this Liberation Front business, though? And here's our chief. Chief Anderson, good work in there. I have something important I need to discuss with you. But before that, I need to finish up the press release we're putting out about this case. Help them out. I help them word it. Then come see me. Okay. STPD press release. The investigation involving the murder of Heather Peterson was concluded today, which resulted in the arrest of Daryl Peterson, 41, and Jerry Cox, 26. Now, Jerry Cox was just some guy who was burglarizing the house, if you remember. All evidence pertaining to the case has been directed to the relevant authorities, with the full cooperation and counsel of the STPD prosecutor counselor. Okay. They will be treated following judicial procedure, and their cases will be taken to criminal court, or the criminals have been incarcerated. No, no, no. They'll be treated subject to judicial procedure. Daryl Peterson, the husband, not initially a suspect, the main suspect, the victim's husband. Let's just go ahead. The victim's husband confessed to the murder during questioning. Although he initially attempted to hide his involvement by staging a violent robbery, evidence found at the scene contradicted parts of his description of the event. The police will be advancing charges of voluntary manslaughter, first degree murder, voluntary manslaughter, first degree murder. Um... It's not really a crime of passion. First degree murder is like, it's got to be premeditated. You really, uh, voluntary manslaughter, but it's not voluntary manslaughter. Voluntary manslaughter is if Jerry Cox had done it. If he had broken in, I, actually, no, I'm going to take that back. It was, it's literally if you, you like, you walk into a room, you see somebody and you go, ah, and then shoot him. That's close to voluntary manslaughter. The reason it wouldn't be is because Jerry Cox is a burglar. Burglar with a gun elevates it. Burglar with a gun who shoots someone elevates it. Burglar with a gun who shoots someone and kills someone is a felony murder. So, I think. So, first degree murder. I don't know, I'm just, I'm, this is just stuff I picked up. Due to the confession, the manslaughter charges against Jerry Cox have been dropped and he will only face prosecution for breaking and entering and theft. There you go. His involvement in creating the circumstances for the murder to happen will be investigated further. Hell no. Evidence suggests he had no violent intent, no connection to the murder. Who cares? His involvement with the crime. All right, fine. No violent intent. Moving on. Pick an old memory. Speed Demon. Speed Demon, you have more time to interrogate, but cannot access files during or before interrogations. <laughs> Fuck it. We'll do it live. Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. Oh, I guess this is like, so this is like RPG style, we get to uh, advance our skills, right? Profiler, reading reactions and emotional states and assigns to you. You have an exact evaluation in numbers of how fearful and empathetic the subjects are. Pupils dilated, satisfactory. Nope. Intimidating presence, you have mastered the use of threats and silence to cow your subjects. A dog that barks is a dog insufficiently boiled. Hmm. Uh. Hey, maybe known pacifist. You always follow procedure and are known for it. Subjects have more empathy towards you, but you have trouble frightening them and cannot use enhanced interrogation. Right. Last time we found out that we can basically torture. Not torture, but we can rough up the suspects. We can tase them or throw them against the wall or basically just give them a good shake. We do this by the book or else we're no different from them. Mm. Scholar of ideology. You have keenly studied extremist ideology and may use that knowledge when, taking, when talking to people with radical convictions. In the end, we will strike back against ourselves. I kind of want to get this, because I feel like this is probably where the game is going. So we're going to go with that. Okay, Scholar of Ideology, moving on. Hey, Chief. You've been in this Liberation Front business you got out of Peterson. It seems to be pretty serious stuff. We've been claiming more and more hits, and seem to be behind things like assaults on politicians. They appear to be expanding their operations, chiefly in our city, so... I've talked it over with the powers that be, and we've decided that you're the best person for the job. You'll be heading up a small unit to combat these guys. We are pulling some of the best people from other departments to work with you, 
And not gonna lie, this unit will mean all eyes will be on you. Try and keep everyone happy. But most importantly, stop these bastards. Rest up. See you tomorrow. Chief, congratulations on your new assignment, Detective. Let me introduce some of the people you'll be working with. This is Tab Thompson, analyst extraordinaire. Tab, I look forward to addressing the threat of the Liberation Front with you, Detective. Chief Anderson, and this is Jennifer Reyes, organized crime department's best. Delighted, Detective. Mordecai Fisher, who we pulled from Homicide, will also be helping you out in the field. I'll leave you to it. Jennifer, shall we head out and talk some shop over at Hannigan's? Is that a bar? Tab, the meeting room is not being used. Hannigan sounds great. Let's take the meeting room. Let's just go straight to our desks. Chief already assigned his task to cover. Let's go take a little drinky drink at the bar. We're cops, after all. I don't know what that means. We're <laughs> Jennifer, we've got some live action, boss. Morty's out there with some badges grabbing our three suspects for who that Hornbury Horn Bunny might be. Oh, I see. Tab, I do hope Mr. Fisher practices restraint. I know him to be rather abrasive when bringing in people. I'm sure Morty means well. Well, the terrorists among them deserve to be abrased. Procedure's important. Innocent until proven guilty. Let's, uh, let's do this by the book. Now, I'm sure he means well. All right, we're a team. I'm sure he's doing his best. Jennifer, I'm going to get the rooms ready. It's going to be three people? Man... There's an update being pushed to the chat room software. Darn. It seems that the Liberation Front have found out about our move. They've triggered the relocation of passwords for the chat room. It's just a matter of minutes before the current password becomes useless. We need to acquire a new one ASAP. They're here. Get ready to interrogate them. We'll line up the files. Okay, Police Department, Form Number 300, AP APPD, APDV. For internal use only, incident narrative. The Liberation Front is plotting online using password-protected forums and chat rooms with their members hiding behind an anonymous handles. Following Peterson's tip, we tracked down the main chat room they use, a server dedicated to pet care. We've recently seen traffic spike on one of the special access private rooms, and we suspect something major is happening. We've managed to find a username that has the special permission required to access most of the private channels in this chat room, Hornbunny49. Now we need the password. Using IP tracking, we've managed to narrow down the user ID to three possible individuals. None of them admit to ping Hornbuddy49, and as such, are now held for further questioning. The Liberation Front caught wind of our inquiries, initiating a mass reset of passwords and access permissions. We only have minutes to find the password that gives us access to their conversations. So this is going to be timed. It's really a tough day coming, too. It means a lot to me that you're here with you. I've been struggling all the week with this. We are here to help. If you need us, thanks. Of course, I something something and the thing. Uh -huh. Proud. Good luck. We did everything right for this. See you tomorrow. Okay. And there's Horn Bunny 49. Suspects Diana O'Donnell. Diana O'Donnell was one of the IPs that might have belonged to the Liberation Front member using the Horn Bunny 49 handle on the pet care chat room. Diana is what is called an alternative model, doing model work as well as the occasional acting job until the state under the stage name Sabina Jones. She dropped out of medical school and was a nightclub entertainer in the past. Several of her known associates have been suspect suspected of or charged with narcotics related offenses. She hosts a blog that regularly critiques modern lifestyle trends. Tattoos, cartoon rabbit on back, not a tram stamp on the lower back. Michael Lemon. Michael Lemon has one of the IPs that might have belonged to the Liberation Front member using Horn Bunny 49 handle in the pet care chat rooms. Michael works as a pet stylist for a, bro for a boarding kennel and a salon that he co-owns. A humanities graduate, he's an aficionado of the city's underground theater scene and a card-carrying member of the Democracy Party. Fred Enos. Fred Enos is one of the IPs that might have belonged to the Liberation Front members using the Horn Bunny 49 handle on the pet care chat room. Fred works as a risk analyst of a major bank. Thrice divorced, he practices airsoft and plays field tennis. He has repeatedly threatened to sue us while we were holding him for questioning. Well, I mean, the immediate, uh, this may be a false flag, but the immediate thought is the rabbit, right? Okay, and this is going to be timed, so there's no time to faff around. Well, let's get to it. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. What's the password in the special room, Diana? Uh... 
I guess this is actually a thing. Do you know Michael Lemon or Fred Enos? How are you? Let's talk about pet care. What do you know about Liberation Front? Have you had to tour a rabbit? Look at any connection? No. How are you? Fine, I understand you have questions about a chat room. Oh, every question takes it down. Interesting. Yes, and I'll answer them or else you'll be here all night. Yes, lives are at stake. I need your help with some fast answers, please. Boom. I nod. I'll do my best. Chat room, honey. Do you... What, what do you think of the Liberation Front? Uh, they're inconsistent in their ideology, and arguing for taking lives is never acceptable, regardless of your cause. What you say is they stand for? Eh, just incoherently vague or antisocial and incompatible values, really. Actually stand for equality and absolute form of it. Isn't that a noble ideal? They actually stand for personal freedom and absolute form of it. Isn't that a noble ideal? They actually stand for state dissolution, dissolution of authority. Isn't that a noble ideal? Hmm. And for personal freedom, frank quality, personal freedom. I guess, but anarchy is in freedom in my view. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, let's talk about the pet care chat room then. Stay in the laid back tone. Yes, sure. Do you have any pets? I have some questions about the conversations there. I have some questions about some, some of the nicknames in that chat room. I'll do my best to remember. Do you know Horn Bunny? Um, some guy, he tried to hit on me online once. Uh, what nickname do you use? Mistress Meow. Really? Talk about something else. Uh, do you have any pets? Eh, why not? No, I don't actually. Oh, is it for your blog? Be in a pet care room without having any pets, don't you think? Mm-hmm, you know it. I have read your blog. You are very critical of our society and attitude that, that could be liberation front friendly, you know? I liked it. Oh, okay. Smile. Thanks. What are you currently writing about? You're a journalist. You're observing this group. Notice anything peculiar? I really appreciate your post on intersectional feminism's merits and excesses. People should really stop reading blogs and pick up books again. No. What did you observe? Have you ever been online? Peculiarity is the norm, but no, nothing worth mentioning. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't really want to talk about this right now. It's pretty open. Boom. Hey, I put a lot of effort into that one. It was a pleasure to write. Hey. What are you currently working on? I've been giving it a lot of thought recently about how crazy the practice of dog breeding actually is. And that's fair. There's some stuff that's really just... a little upsetting sometimes. Okay, so about the uh, blog of yours, ask some questions. Now let's go back. Uh, what's the password? Because you seem pretty open right now. Boom. Huh? What special room? You know what, Diana? Don't push me. Be nice over here. The two, we're looking for a horn, but you connection. What did you say your opinion of the Liberation Front? So how are you? A few more questions. Boom. Uh, I have a lot of tattoos, honey. No connection. Fine. I know many people, but not those two. Okay, so how are you? One more time, and then we'll go to the other guys. Keep on asking about it. I don't know this special room. Fine. Uh, let's deal with Enos over here. How are you, Mr. Enos? No, he's he wants to... He wants us... Well, he's threatened to sue us, right? So... 49, same age as my father. Mm-hmm, if you say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're a terrorist known as Horn Buddy 49, then, with your age and the name? Grew up back in the day, huh? So you used to be an Oak Scout? Yes, I was, actually. Cool. How are you? Quite discontent with being dragged here. Use my colleague if they rushed you here, but time is of the essence. Well, sorry to bother you. You're fast. It's not as if we're trying to save lives. Well, I would have preferred the, uh, that excuse from them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know either of these two? I don't know either of them. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the Liberation Front? I see their points. The world really isn't what it should be. Okay, let's talk some more about that. The world could change, do with a big change. The last libertarian French sympathizers we had in here left with broken legs. No, let's go with this. Did not, I know, brother. Do you think the Liberation Front is willing to take violent action? What would you say the liberation they stand for? Terrorism? Really? They actually stand for equality. They stand for personal freedom. Yeah, sure is. Yes, that's right. 
Do you think they're willing to take a, a violent action? I don't know, but sometimes you gotta take desperate measures, you know? I said stand for okay. Interesting. So let's talk about this pet care chat room. Um, fine. I'm very curious to see where this is going. Yeah, do you have any pets? Muggy, my cat. He's my entire life. I'm watching you, Enos. It must be nice having a pet to give you comfort during those lonely moments. No, no, no. Okay, weirdo, let's put the animal love down a notch. You prefer cat to human company? Yes, exactly. I just find people very tiring, you know? I'm with you. Not really, but, you know, for purposes of this interrogation. So do you know these two? Mm-mm, I don't know either of them. What's the password to the special room? Aha! I, I think what the Liberation Front is doing is right. I, I won't betray them. Fred, the Front will hurt innocent people, their pets too. You're a good guy and I need your help. You better tell me, Fred, or I swear I will do my best to make sure you and everything you love suffer for the rest of my days. No, it's their pets. He loves his cat. Boom. Uh, all right. You're right. I'll give you the password. Excelsior. <laughs> Welcome, Horn Bunny 49. Interrogation successful. We're in. Now we can try to delicately draw out some information on the libertarian on the Liberation Front's plans. Interview transcript. No, I don't really care about that. Continue. STPD press release. In response to the emergency of the terrorist organization that identifies itself as the Liberation Front. Nope. The recent upsurge in terrorist activity. Maybe. Yeah, we're not going to identify them in the press release because we don't want to spook them. Now, they're already spooked, but we're not going to say anything. Especially if their followers don't necessarily all know. The STPD assembled the... Peace and Stability, Retribution and Justice, Truth and Order... Peace and Stability, that seems like the kind of thing that they would do. Special unit in order to counter this threat. STPDPS. Ugh. And Intel... Uh... PSU. PSSU, maybe? An intelligence gathering operation of the respective unit has led to the interview and eventual arrest of Fred Enos, a confessed sympathizer, a suspected collaborator. Suspected collaborator. He's not a confessed sympathizer, and I'll tell you why. Again, it's to not let anybody know. Of a terrorist cell, the two other suspects have been interviewed as part of the same investigation, but they have been released, having proven their innocence due to the lack of evidence against them. Due to lack of evidence against them, along with his conviction, a uh, confession, Fred Enos' interview also yielded relevant intervention regarding the terrorist organization, the password to secure chat. Why would you ever write that, man? Relevant information regarding the terrorist organization. Thank you. The officers in charge of the investigation are hopeful that this information will be useful in preventing future terrorist attacks. Cha-ching. Jennifer, great job in there, boss. Now that we're logged in, even for a second, we can analyze that we've been talking, uh, uh, what they've been talking about. At a first glance, they seem to be using code words. I can set up a smart algorithm that can detect possible meanings from the contextual usage of words. Or we can simply try to figure it out directly. I don't trust algorithms, Jennifer. Look at their conversations and try and figure out what they've been talking about. Codes may be deceiving to the naked eye. Let the algorithms do the work, tell me what pops up. Do both. Set up the algorithm and also try to figure out manually. Why wouldn't you do both? Why would you not do both? Don't give me that look. Yeah. This will mean that both of us will be busy working on this. We may have a hard time responding to other issues that pop up. Do both anyway. We'll see what bites. Fine. Forget the algorithm then. Intuition will be our weapon. Okay. Let the computers do the work then. No. Do, do both. We are a crack squad of the STPD. Okay? We are the best of the best, and we are trying to root out terrorism. We gotta do everything. There is no tool that we do not use. Boom. Chief? As part of leading your team, you'll have to manage budget and assign missions. You're budgeting, and you'll be getting $2,000 with each budget round. You can influence your available funds in many ways, and any sums unspent are saved for the next budget round. You can assign available agents to missions, on top of their core investigation work for the team. How well they'll do is determined by how motivated they are, and how much the task fits their background and expertise. I've ordered you an outsourced HR report. It's on me. It should tell you how well the agents might do on missions. If you don't buy yourself expanded HR reports in the future, you won't know what their likelihood of success will be. Maintaining all facets of the image of your team is key. You need approval, or else you'll lose the team. 
buying expanded PR reports can help you understand what's causing shifts in your image. All set? Sounds like a lot. How do I know what the consequences of each choice will be before I make them? Boom. Um, well, you don't. It's your job to evaluate the consequences of the risks in each of the actions and options might be. Use your reason. Use trial and error. But this isn't the police academy. Things are not transparent and don't have fixed and easy predictable effects. You think I had an any idea hitting on that redhead back in college would mean I now have to go to marriage counseling? I had no idea. That's what real life's like. Good luck. All right, chief. Don't don't use me to air out your whatever. Okay, budget allocation, order HR report, comprehensive evaluation of the agents giving us an exact assessment of their morale level, their compatibility, the missions available as well as in, as well as expanding their personnel file. Order extended PR report, order detailed evaluation from the Bertzler Marson company of how key stakeholders currently view the task forces led by you. PR assistants receive key advice and PR support from Bertzler Marson company towards advertising the task forces efforts in a positive light. Civil forfeiture. Assign overtime to the agents in order to help other departments pursue cases that are likely to involve major civil forfeiture opportunities, thus gaining access to the newly confiscated resources. R&R team building. Take the other agents out to an evening of team building. Civil forfeiture. If you guys haven't seen, there's a great John Oliver last week tonight episode about that. Some of the stuff that goes on with civil forfeiture is nuts. I actually highly recommend it. I'll probably put a link in the description just because it's interesting. CO Overtime. Assign overtime to the agents in order to participate in a community outreach program that has officers engaging with the at-risk youth. This will allow the teens to gain a better understanding of police work and perhaps even gain interest in law enforcement. Informer Stimulants. Give the agent going on the Pursue Informer mission extra budget to help motivate those that may hold information. Procedure Training. Organize a training session for the agents to learn the latest techniques and procedures used by the department. And Therapy. Book a session with a specialized therapist helping law enforcement officers deal with the stresses commonly encountered in their line of work. Hmm. Whoa, okay. Yeah, these are all tasks. Pursue informer. Hit the streets. Talk to people. Pressure existing contacts. Try to find someone that has intel line about has an intel line about this liberation front. Work with a district attorney to bring charges to the animal care chat room hosts that the liberation front used. Have them pay damages, at least for facilitating terrorist operations. Why would we waste our time? Like, this is information gathering, okay? Let the DA do his thing. Or her thing. Buy the book. Make sure everything done by the, everything's done by the book. Write up detailed reports, do the paperwork, get all the permits and, conf- and confirm- confirmations needed. I'm sorry. Pursue chat room advertisers. Go to the people whose pet, cha- pet shops have advertised for pet products and see if they have any information. Yeah, okay. Volunteer another. Help out the department deal with their workload. Why? Why? There are terrorists running around. Okay, formulate budget request. Petition authorities, file for deductibles, optimize all you can to get some extra money into the next budget. Track the murder weapon. Go into the field and try to track down the origin of Peterson's weapon. Eh, that's possible. That's interesting. Go home early. Nobody cares. Chat room. Go home early. Have the agent's agent head home early. That's maybe if they're really tired or something. Focus on chatroom analysis. Use all remaining available time on keeping the agent's eyes on the chatroom discussions. Gain and share an understanding of the people there and their objectives. Now, here's the thing. If they know, right? If they know that we are in the chatroom. Well, Jennifer, you can go ahead and pursue that chatroom. And then you... Okay. See if they have any information... We can track the murder weapon well. Okay, Mordecai, you will track the murder weapon, because let's see where he got his gun, right? And then pursuing the informer, 20% success, nah. 55% success, nah. What are you good at? Like, what are you, like, your algorithm, right? You're, like, all whatever. So buy the book, We get all the permits and confirmations needed. No, I want you guys working, the, like, the thing. I want you doing stuff, man. Mm -hmm. 60%, 55%, but I want to focus on chat room analysis and I want it as good as I can get. Pursue Informer is only 20%, which is unfortunately, but the Advertisers, let's put you on the Advertisers. 
Okay, so this doesn't actually give me any money, which is good. Now we can put money in here. Let's do the following. Let's go ahead. Now, we're not doing anything with informers. Uh, used by the department? No. See over this will allow the teens to gain? No. Take the event on a thing. That, we'll, we'll do later. We'll do drinks later or something. Order an extended PR report. HR. Comprehensive evaluation of the agents giving us an exact assessment of their morale level, their compatibility with the missions available, as well as expanding their personnel file. Let's do that. And then... Therapy. Nobody really needs it right now. We're not really doing anything. Over time to the agents in order to precipitate... Pretend to do? No. Help motivate those that may hold information. No, because they're not doing pursue informers. Again. PR report. Nobody cares right now. We're not really that deep into this. Take the other agents out for an evening or whatever. Hmm. Okay, well, let's learn about the procedure training, right? Because maybe that'll actually improve them a little bit, right? So let's continue. Chief, we've got a report in. I'm going to ask you to try and answer a few of his questions. Oh, a reporter. This is Eddie Walker from the Heraldic. Uh, greetings, officer. Are you ready to get started? I'll leave you to it. Chief, <laughs> we don't have a PR guy? I gotta, I gotta book my own gigs? Alright. Let's make the snappy. Let me get my files first in case I need to get details. Let me clear the room first, make sure we have some privacy. The light will, you know, um, light is the best disinfectant, or sunlight is the greatest disinfectant. So, let's get my files out. What's up, Eddie? So, first things first. How does it feel to be assigned uh, to lead to such an important task force? I prefer to stick to discussing the technical questions. Please, I'm not looking to talk about my feelings about the press. It's an immense responsibility. We'll put in an effort every day and every night to stop these bastards. It's the police's responsibility to make the city safe again. We've got the best people. We'll deliver. Boom. Eddie, I don't like your face. What sort of boss are you to your team? What sort of boss am I? I delegate a lot. I have a great team and they can be trusted to make good decisions. I follow the well-thought-out procedures and protocols that the PD prescribes for team management. I give detailed instructions and inspiring a sense of discipline. I make sure we're followed, and I make sure they're followed to the letter. Uh, do, 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 do. So that means I'm in charge of everything. I follow the well thought out procedures and protocols the PD describes for team management. It's one of these two. Uh, they can be trusted to make good decisions. I have a really good team. Um. Man, these are all pretty good. None of these are like. I'm screwing up as a command, you know, I'm screwing up the image here. I have a great team and they can be trusted to make good decisions. Let's go with that. Let's just keep the team cohesive, right? Are you and your team prepared enough to take on this duty? Yes, experts like Tab Thompson are some of the best available. Yes, experienced officers like Jennifer Reyes. Yes, we all, uh, we all try our best, we just hope it'll be enough. No, why are you saying that? And why is this? Why do I have to choose? You know what? Jennifer Reyes. Why? Because she doesn't rely on computers and gadgets and gizmos. Boom. Shout out. You're facing a threat that seems to have significant resources. Can you keep up with them, logistically speaking? The police department... How do I know you're not connected? The police department is committed to seeing safety restored. Yes, we believe we can. These people, they don't need to follow the rules. While we do, hopefully the red tape won't cost lives. Such organizations try to create the appearance of wielding more power than they really have. We'll get them. Boom, I like this one. Bravado. Eddie, I do not like the way you look at me when I give you the answers, alright? Eddie Walker, what comes first in your investigation? Disarming the pawns or getting to the leaders? Not answering that question. Boom. The first step is surely disarming the pawns to keep people safe. The only real way to really bring them down will be to get to the leaders. I'm afraid I can't share such strategic procedural details. No, I can't. Don't look at me like that. This Liberation Front, what do they want? I want to give them as little airtime as possible. It's what they want, so no comment on the Liberation Front. They seem to have a disjointed political ideology that preys on disaffection. We're still trying to understand it. A bunch of psychos that need to be stopped. The rest is fluff. No, no comment on them, thank you. How can people at home help the task force? 
The task force is taking care of this. People should support the boys in blue. Be vigilant, be safe, be alert, and report suspicious behavior immediately. This Liberation Front wants people scared. Refuse to be afraid. Go on with your life uninterrupted. Let's be vigilant, all right? Let's just start pulling in details, all right? See something, say something, whatever other slogans there are. Uh, what time frame are we looking at? When will we be rid of this threat? The point of our action is firstly to make people safe. We'll do that for as long as it takes. We'll crush these maggots before the end of the year. There's still the initial phase of the operation. We can't share any timeline details. The point of our action is firstly to make people safe. We'll do that for as long as it takes. I kind of like that, although, you know, if it turns out that people start dying, uh, I'm going to look like an idiot. <laughs> Um, I don't want to say this. This seems stupid. So initial phases. I don't want to say we're just getting started, you know? So we're going to keep people safe for as long as it takes. Thank you for the interview, officer. I'm not like a lieutenant or anything? I'm not... I'm nothing? Alright. For internal use only. Alright, let's just read through this stuff. Mission report. Focus on chat room analysis, Jennifer Reyes. Success. We understand how they work better. Blackmailing, pressuring non-members is one of their methods, so we might want to inquire about that in the interrogations. Pursue so chat room advertisers with Thompson. We found them, but they seem to be just trying to sell their products. No discernible link to the Liberation Front. All right, fine. Track the murder weapon. The gun. Does that... Wait a minute. If there's another one, does that mean we can actually get another person? Is that what happens when we go to the overtime thing? Huh. Track the murder weapon. Mordecai. Oh, and success. Everybody succeeded. Nice. The gun was taken off of a street dealer, not from a gun fair. While they have no relevant info, the confiscation of several illegal weapons he had on him means a bump in next month's department budget. Boom. PR report. Popularity. How much the residents of the city trust your department to protect them? Alright, we're somewhere in the middle. Press approval. How friendly the journalists are who write about your investigations. They better be. Authorities approval. How favorable the institutions in the city are to the results you're getting. Excellent. Your HR report is ready. Files declassified. Herald, operations manual. I don't even know what that is. Alright, HR report. Whoa. Hmm. I kinda... Well, let's at least look at this stuff. Uh, filed by Abigail Misko or Luke Sanderson. Name, Jennifer Reyes, observations. Extra aspects discovered in HR interviews or through background research have been added as classified entries to the agent's file. Given the following and, inter in, 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 integ uh, and integrating the agent's background, success probabilities have been calculated. Motivation level high. The subject is well motivated and intends to pursue tasks to the best of their ability, though fatigue may reduce efficiency. Cap Thompson, yes, yeah, see, there's clearly space for another person. Cap Thompson, given the following integration of the agent's background, success probabilities have been calculated, and it's still high motivation. And Tab Thompson, same th or Mordecai, is the same thing. Okay. Jennifer Reyes. Alright, well, let's read these, and I think then we'll probably put a pin in it. Jennifer was born and raised in a quiet San Francisco suburbia. He, her early educational records show excellent grades, as well as her being active in numerous NGOs and youth sports clubs. She was characterized as a highly ambitious, driven, and energetic young woman. She applied for an engineering degree at a reputed university. Over time, her class attendance steadily dropped and withered her grades. Notes from the university psychologist showed that she was having trouble adapting to the new environment and underlined low levels of engagement and motivation. Jennifer put her studies on hold in her sophomore year, joining a volunteer group organizing American-European cultural exchange programs. She worked in Poland for a year with a local NGO, which was offering free literacy lessons to impoverished, uneducated adults and trying to re-enroll them in the workforce. It is most likely here that Jennifer found her passion for psychology, as well as discovering the hardships some people had uh, the misfortune of enduring. This was due to bad luck, bad decisions, and bad food choices. I can certainly help them with the first two, as she describes in an email to her parents. Upon returning, she dropped out of her engineering fa uh, faculty and applied for a degree in psychology at Berkeley with a scholarship. She found herself most... Really? Man, she must have been kicking butt in everything if she went to Berkeley on a scholarship after basically dropping out of another school. But all right. She found herself most drawn in cases to severe trauma that resulted in criminal behavior and changed her major to specialize in forensic psychology. She found employment as an expert witness, testing offenders before trial to assess their sanity, treatment needs, and psych uh, psychic state. 
Her well-written and insightful reports were noticed by an FBI recruiter who offered her position as a criminal profiler. As such, she was tasked with looking at closed cases and constructing a psychological pattern of that type of criminal to aid in similar situations in the future. After joining the FBI, the following uh, case was placed under their authority, now sealed and archived. Martha Hugh was found at her home, washing a bloody knife. Her husband's body was discovered in the trunk of a car, wrapped in towels. During her trial, Martha Hugh's lawyer pleaded insanity, although no past behavior or family history would indicate the except for clear evidence of domestic violence. Jennifer conducted an interview, and she confirmed severe psychological instability. Martha Hugh was hospitalized, avoiding a decades-long prison sentence. However, future assessments of hospital staff would find no evidence of such mental instability, and she was discharged soon after. Her criminal prosecution case was never reopened. Interesting. Okay. Yep. Bachelor in Forensic Psychology from Berkeley. Morty. Mordecai Fisher, Texas State University Bachelor of Juvenile Justice. Mordecai Fisher, born Mordecai Matzel, grew up in his now, now demolished trailer park on the outskirts of San Antonio. His father worked as an assistant mechanic contractor in the Army Group North Attachment Station in Fort Sam Houston. Of his mother, we only have the name Rosa Lopez from Mordecai's birth certificate, yet there are no other records to further identify her. His grades show he ex excelled in school and he was involved in numerous community service volunteer activities. This is contrasted, though, by the school counselor reports that describe him as lonely and reclusive, with few friends and overall being socially unadapted. The psychologist deemed him rash, with a propensity for violence. Hmm. He was not marked for further inquiries into these issues, as the school assessed his stable family environment and overall school performance do not raise cause for concern. Showing himself worried, uh, himself worried by the rise of youth crime plague in the San Antonio community, he applied for a law degree at Texas University with a major in juvenile justice. He did not, however, pursue a legal career, joining instead the Austin Police Department after finishing his studies. Oh, so he didn't actually get a JD, he just got a bachelor, okay. Mordecai quickly distinguished himself as a hardworking result-oriented officer. He was eventually promoted to the newly formed Austin Gang Suppression Unit. Mordecai and his unit were essential in Operation Blue Corner, following a long-term infiltration mission resulting in the arrest of two gang bosses as well as their lieutenants during a drug exchange. This portion is confidential, classified by multiple sources, class, classify on OADR. Okay, fine. Tab Thompson. Tab Thompson, BA Economic Crime Investigation, Masters in Forensic Science from Roberts College. Special Agent. Special Agents, okay, so they're all Special Agents, fine. The child of Bogdanov in, uh... Ilyuva, Yulieva, sorry. Bogdanov in Yulieva Thompson, okay. A family of Russian immigrants who arrived a long time ago. Thompson? Okay, that's an America's th Americanized name. The family found founded Cape Industries, one of the main manufacturing operators in the local area. With a family tradition deeply rooted in the old ways, including Hellenic Orthodoxy, Tab attempted, attended a private religious school, highly reputable and equally expensive. However, from an early age, some peculiarities in behavior were noticed. Reclusiveness, long periods of silence, and obsessive focus when given a task. Unusual for someone that age. Several psychologists attempted to give an assessment, but their reports are conflicting, ranging from depression to autism. Eventually, the parents gave up trying to fix their child and opted to ignore these quirks, hoping they were just a phase that would eventually pass. They did not pass, but rather evolved into a complex individual Tab is today. A self-described genderless human, humanist proceduralist, Tab shows great analytical skill, intense patience and diligence, but also empathy and sensibility to the suffering of those around. After graduating summa cum laude, they joined, they joined the Small but Effective Criminal Enforcement and Financial Crimes Bureau in New York, the youngest of age to be accepted. The team was involved in high-profile cases of tax evasion and market fraud, tracking the flow of dirty money back to some of the most well-established industrialists of the state, who had been successfully avoiding prosecution for a long time. Confidential, multiple sources, yada yada. Okie doke. Alright, interesting. Mission report we've read. Okay, this is just the memories. Oh my god. No, this is just all the stuff we read. Okay, so let's read this really quickly. Okay, the Heraldic, the Liberation Front, and me, how I wasn't cool enough to change the world. 
by Lisa Nguyen Holst in a zeitgeist of disaffection and stagnation change looms Hubert Moore okay strike back all right let's read this and we'll stop it uh, Lisa Nguyen Holst reports for the heraldic on lifestyle art mindfulness and activism an accomplished improv actor her blog Lisa's liquid life has received several prizes for online journalism hmm. okay two bucks fifty okay making sense not that price, though. There are only two things you will hear coming out of your mom's church group. Your friends, Giselle's friend, your friend Giselle's friends at the techno club, the people at work, the lady that restocks the shelves at the supermarket, and from your therapist after the session's done. What happened on the last episode of Throne of Games? Uh-huh. Back when it was still going, and more recently, this Liberation Front business. Somewhere at the intersection of activism, being a political movement, and being a personal network, the, broad, the broadness of its appeal is like nothing seen before. They seem to gather the coolest of the cool, but not in the closed bubble way you might expect. Rumor has it, you can find anyone from construction workers to social media influencers, from moms to teens, from hard atheists to traditional Muslims, and this is the story of how they refuse to have me. After so much digging online, I eventually managed to find a ghost account on Chirper that would comment about current events, apparently from the vantage point of an insider of this liberation front, sliding into the DMs they themed me they seemed credible, and also declared to handle recruitment. Fun in tone, with even the choice memes thrown in to punctuate the conversation, it was a much better discussion than I got from a dating app, I have to say. From the few exchanges that we had, I began to understand that what seems to be at their core is that they're the group unwilling to accept that's just how the world is as an answer. Unwilling to accept the answer from politicians, from companies, from society, from powerful groups, from authorities, they are committed to refusing the status quo and making the world truly changeable by the will of the people again. Some could call it ultimate democracy, others would call it anarchy, most will call it just a fad. But in today's environment of ideas with the planet under threat, with equity or key traditions, depending on who you ask, under threat, and with new economic modes emerging, they are hitting all of the sensitive spots in one swooping cool move. Two days into the conversation, after having expressed my interest in joining their movement, I assumed they had gotten around to the background checks. They asked about how my articles sometimes get published in the Heraldic, and it didn't appear to be a deal breaker at the time. However, once they made it explicit that our ongoing conversation was going to be off the record, I was forced to face with a choice being part of this cool new club or never being able to write about it. With no bitterness, I explained that my journalistic principles and career came first. My interlocutor left me with a very ominous, your career credentials won't matter in the future, before ceasing to respond. Secrecy is key with these people to maintaining the brand's mystique, I believe. Evocative to the point, the Chirper account I spoke to has since been deleted. I'm not naive. For all I know, I could have been talking to a very competent and convincing troll. But if everyone sees Liberation Front Rep, is that not what they become? They're not incorporated in any way, have no discernible spokesperson. The most anyone will associate with the Front is to admit sympathy, and yet they are clearly becoming an established presence in the city, garnering national attention. Maybe one day I'll be cool enough to be allowed into the Liberation Front without having to dis discard any loyalty to my job. Until that time, I wish them the best of luck in shifting the world awake. We need these superheroes for change now, more than ever. I don't really think you do, but, uh, okay. All right, we are actually going to put a pin in it there, and we will come back to this next time. Um, I'm curious to see where this goes. Uh, there's a lot of management layer beyond the pure interrogations, and I'm kind of down with that idea. I wonder how we're going to get this fourth person. Maybe it's a story locked thing, or maybe we'll get him by sending out the sort of the goodwill stuff. We'll see. Okay, so if you guys uh, enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let me know that I'm doing something right. Let me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you have thoughts about this game, if you think I'm missing something, or I can be playing this in a particular way, or you would like to see something very particular in this playthrough, by all means, leave a comment. And in any case, I'll see you all next time. Ba ba ba